y'all and welcome my name is Kay and this is my youtube channel where I share all about my knitting crocheting and making adventures today is Wednesday March 1st it is I think it's about 9 30 yep about 9 40 a.m and I've got quite a bit to share with you today it's been a couple of weeks I didn't record last week I had a trip over the weekend with some knitting friends so last week I was just getting the house in order for me to be gone for a few days getting all of my stuff ready to go so it was a busier week last week so there was no new YouTube video but I'm back today with like I said so much to share with you I'm looking around and there is just stuff everywhere I have some stuff that came in the mail some purchases that I made over the weekend I have a few finished objects, but I don't have them here to show. We'll talk about that in a minute. And lots of works in progress. So let's get started. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the Crazy Sock Lady. I will have links right down below this video in the description box for everywhere that you can find me. Shops that I talk about will be linked. Any project pages, everything that I show does have a Ravelry project page and I always link those right down below so that you can find those easily to find out more information about any projects that I'm working on. Let me pull up my notes here in my notebook so that I don't forget anything. We do have a giveaway winner to announce from the last episode. We'll do that shortly. And then we also have a giveaway that we're going to do this episode. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Since it is March 1st, I thought we would go ahead and go over my January stats. I have both of my books here that I am tracking things. So I am tracking all finished objects and then how many grams went into that finished object. In February, I finished 21 objects. Four of those were socks, 16 were dishcloths. <laughs> I'm still on a dishcloth kick. And I finished one sweater, my lace and fade boxy. So that's my February breakdown. So far this year, I have finished 43 items, um, knit or crocheted. So then in my other book here, I am tracking how many grams I use for those finished objects. So total grams for finished objects in the month of February was 816.8 grams. So far for the year, I have used 2,339.4 grams in finished objects. And I did skeins in and skeins out. So skeins in the month of February 7 because I did make some purchases over the weekend and out for the month of February 13. So my total for the year in is eight, out is 28. So pretty happy with that. Like I said, there were definitely some purchases this weekend. <laughs> and then I did have my yarnable, so that was one of my February ones. Um, I was just looking, but yes, I have, that's the correct number is seven for in this month. Okay, so that's just a little update on the February stats. Okay, so my finished objects for this episode, I do not have here to show you because they have been gifted. I knit some socks for a few of my friends and I will talk about, I'll put some pictures up as I talk about those here. So the first one was my February Yarnable colorway and I knit both of these the exact same way as far as they were on a US1 2.25 millimeter 32 inch magic loop. I did toe up and an afterthought heel. And then for the bind off on the cuff, I use the Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off. So the toe for the toe up, I do not have a pattern for that yet. I've talked about that quite a bit. Whenever I feel ready and inspired to do that tutorial, I will work on that at that time, but I don't know when um, that will be. And then for the afterthought heel, I did just do it as I do in my tutorial for cuff down socks. So you can find that tutorial here on my YouTube. So the first ones was the Yarnable colorway for February of 2023. 
And then the heels on both of these socks, I used the January Full Skein, the Yarnable colorway um, from this year. And the second pair of socks is just a mystery yarn. It is the one that I found up in Calvin's, or Calvin's room, <laughs> Wyatt's room, that we are assuming Calvin took up there and hid. And yeah, no clue what it is. I've had a lot of dyers say maybe it's this colorway or that colorway, but there's been so many say that they think it could be this or that, that I have no clue. <laughs> So those are my only two finished objects. Aside from dishcloths, I have finished some dishcloths, obviously, but I will not show every single one of those. When we talk about works in progress, I'll show the two latest ones that I finished because I am using a new dishcloth yarn that I picked up over the weekend. Take a little sip of coffee. It is March first so that's like typical time my allergies kick into their craziness i woke up this morning thinking maybe i was catching a cold but i'm kind of thinking it, it feels just like it's allergies so i'm thinking that's what it is march and april april are the worst months for me with seasonal allergies so i need a little drink my throat is a little scratchy so this hot coffee on it feels amazing <laughs> Okay, works in progress. There are quite a few. Let's just go in the order here and I probably should have pulled these things out. Everything is still kind of just in bags and a mess over here from being on a knitting weekend with friends. I just had everything everywhere. Okay, this is in a fat squirrel bag. And this is my temperature blanket. It is not caught up. I was going to sit down and catch up on it last night, but I did not. So maybe I will work on it a bit today because I am, how much, I don't know. I will, the paper is all folded up, but I think I'm probably like four days behind on this. And then I need to do my end of the month or yeah, like the spot I'm doing, I'll show you. It's easier to show you than to explain. <laughs> so here is my temperature blanket. And this is the spot, the eyelets that I'm talked about that I need to do that. So I need to do that since today is March 1st. I need to get caught up and then do that so that it splits February to March. But you guys, I'm so pleased with how this blanket is looking. It is so much fun. So fun. So all the details for this are on my Ravelry project page. I want to update you guys on it weekly, but don't want to bore people who watch every week with the details every time. You can see my ends here. I am weaving them in as I go. I do have a tutorial for that here on YouTube. So I am just knitting over those as I go and it's working really, really nice. I just need to snip all the extra ends at some point, but so happy with how this is looking. I worked on it a bit over the weekend and got it caught up to, I think that was Saturday that I got it caught up to there. So yeah, I'm probably about four days behind. Okay. Jelly roll blanket got a lot of work and I put it in a new bag because it was outgrowing the bag that I had it in and it was perfect timing because this bag arrived in the mail from Bags by Awesome Granny. It's one of her very large bags and look at the sweet fabric. It is so, so cute. So I moved everything over to this because I have not wanted to put this blanket down. My blankets are just making me so happy right now. I have hardly worked on socks, you guys, hardly at all. I didn't even bring down actually. Oh, nope, they're right there. Okay, we're good. I was gonna say, I didn't bring down the one pair of socks that I've worked on, which they have not gotten much work at all. But this got the most work over the weekend. I should have put some markers in where I was on the strips. I, yeah, I should have done that, but 
This is the Jelly Roll Blanket by Kay Jones. And I have three strips going. One is completely done now. We'll just hold it up this way and go through it. So you can see this strip right over here I have on stitch holders so that I can go back and that's just one thing that's so nice about this. You can start a strip, put it on a stitch holder, and then go back and work on it later. But if you watched recently, you will know this definitely got a lot of work. So here's my second strip. That's the one I'm currently working on. And then this is my finished strip. So I am close to being done with my second strip. And I'll see if I can put a picture in here. When I got to finish with this collar, before I bound off, I lay down on the bed this weekend to make sure that it was long enough. And it is for sure long enough because it's garter, so it stretches a lot too. And my friend Jenny like pulled it up and it goes to stretch it and it goes way over my head. So it is definitely long enough. I am also weaving in my ends as I go, you can kind of see there, just the same method that's in the tutorial um, that I'm using on the temperature blanket. This is a fingering weight blanket. That's what I'm doing with this one. And I'm using 2.5 millimeter. These are signature straights. Just the shortest length that they have. I will link signature um, down below. But I love using those for my scrappy knitted blankets. So yeah, so happy with how this is going and having so much fun remembering why I loved it so much when I cast it on. This has been my evening TV knitting right now. When we sit down to watch Parenthood because we are still watching it. Ooh, I was just telling Ashley the other day, I can't remember. I think we're on season four now. I think we were at the end of season three. I'm gonna look and see what I told her. Um, Sunday we were on season three, episode 11. So not sure how many episodes there are in that season. We may be on season four by this point. Okay, so that's another blanket. <laughs> the socks that got a very little bit of work this weekend, I worked on these just at meal times when we would sit around the table and you know, if I got done eating um, before we moved back to our other spots, then I would pull out my sock and work on it. They are a pair of socks for my niece who actually, I, my sister sent me a picture this morning that my niece Lily has her, a pair of socks that I knit her recently, the toe up knit picks fleecy with the green heels, toes and cuffs. She's wearing those today for crazy sock day at school. She said she's wearing her crazy sock lady socks for her crazy sock day at school. That's a mouthful. Okay, these ones are in a bag by the fat squirrel. And I am past the heel. I've picked up the gusset stitches. This is just the first sock. I do not have a lot done <laughs> at all. I'm doing these on nine inch circulars. US zero is what I use for my nine inch because my gauge changes on them. So I go down a needle size because I knit a little looser on the nine inch. Um, for these, the yarn is Zebra Yarns. Pink Flamingo is the colorway. It is a self-striping yarn. And it came with the full skein of the pink and white self-striping and then the black mini skein. So I think that Lily is gonna absolutely love these. I did do my pop of color at the cuff. I will link my tutorial that shows how I do that for y'all. 
So these will probably become, we haven't been on the go much since I got back from the trip other than school pickups and things and I have been crocheting in school pickups. So um, when we go out to dinner or lunch or anything, those will end up being what I take so that I can get them done because I want to give them to my sister when I see her, not this coming weekend, but the following weekend so that she, I won't be seeing Lily that weekend, but I want to give them to her to give to Lily. Her socks go quickly since she's still, <laughs> she's still little. Okay, just a couple more things. I have my granny wrap that I have been working on. This was a project that I started during December. You can see it over on Vlogmas um, where I was showing my advent projects there. This is a, another bag from Bags by Awesome Granny. Still in a Christmas bag. This project is using the advent calendar that my knit group, we all swapped. Um, so that is what I'm using for this. I'm almost done with this many. I'm on, I think this is day 13 is what I'm on right now. So I've made more progress on this. And I love it so much. So this is a crochet granny wrap. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head who it's by, but it's always linked in my project page. And the pattern is not written for fingering weight. This is fingering weight, but I just changed the hook size. I am using a 3.5 millimeter Tulip Etimo crochet hook. I do have those linked on my Amazon storefront. They are my absolute favorite. But yeah, this is super enjoyable. I've obviously... I knit so many granny squares and all, all things granny when I was crocheting way back in the day, years and years and years ago. And I haven't really done any since, um, but I'm, I'm back to it now. I've got my granny square. This one that you guys saw that was finished, this one I need to show this because I've worked up all of my row one minis that I currently have into this. Um, I've got my granny stripe going. And this and I am I think I'm gonna use more yarn than what is in the advent calendar for this because I know that I will want it bigger I don't think it's gonna be big enough anyways we'll see when I use up all the yarn but I think I'm gonna end up using some scraps that I have in here as well to make it a little larger. And I just know this is gonna be something I use all the time. If you saw on Vlogmas, I always had my calico quilt shawl over my shoulders. And I think this is gonna be the same kind of thing. I just want it huge that I can wrap up in it and just have that extra layer when I'm around the house. So this has been getting a lot of work since I got home. I didn't work on it over the weekend, but since I got home, I've really been motivated to work on this and I'll talk about why in just a minute. Um, so yeah, this is getting a lot of work and I am just magic knotting the ends and I have been doing, when I come to a new mini, I do a magic knot and I will link my tutorial for that. And I have been using, so it was, I think it's been ages ago that I think it was Michelle the Naughty Knitwits talked about, might have been Leslie, but I think it was Michelle. Maybe it was both of them. It's been so long I don't remember. <laughs> but they talked about liquid stitch and using it on their magic knots just to give you that added security. Magic knots, I've never had anything that I've knit knock on wood <laughs> the knot come undone or knit or crocheted but just this added sense of security. I linked this on my Amazon storefront, but you can get it at like Michael's, Joann's, any of those kind of stores. Walmart may even carry it. But I just take the lid off and put the tiniest bit on the dot, rub it in with my thumb and my pointer finger, and it dries super fast. I don't even have to stop crocheting. I do that, put this up, and then just continue crocheting. And you don't notice, it does make the knot a little harder because it is making it more secure, but you don't notice it. It's like I can't feel the knots when I'm feeling through this. So you would really have to look for it and feel the spot where the knot is. 
Um, so I've just been doing that on my granny stripe and on this, I had totally forgotten about that and I came across the liquid stitch where I had purchased it forever ago and I was like, why am I not using this? So I am now using it just to give me that added little bit of security for that. Okay, I'm gonna show you my dishcloths, but before I do that, this is my giant granny square. I am not gonna be able to get the whole thing in, so I will put a picture up of the last time I laid it out and took a picture of it. I have a marker in here holding my last stitch because I'm gonna keep adding to this with my row one minis as I get them. This is just a large granny square. I absolutely love it. This is half of it. And I'm just going to keep going. I'm using Row One Minis. That's a yarn subscription service for mini skeins. And I'm holding them double with themselves. So just taking the inside and the outside of the mini, holding it together to get a DK weight. I'm using a four millimeter hook, I believe. I think it might be back here. Yes. Four millimeter. It's the same Tulip Atimo crochet hooks. And I'm just so happy with it. I've had a lot of people comment on my beginning of round jog line. You can see it there, probably. I can see it. <laughs> but y'all, I don't care. I know there are ways to avoid that. I can't be bothered and I don't care. And nobody is gonna comment on that. If they do, that's a them issue and not a me issue. <laughs> when I am covered up with it, you are not gonna see that. I am not concerned. I am not bothered. I didn't wanna do anything special to avoid it. I just wanna have fun and enjoy my making. Um, and my blanket is gorgeous, even if it has a jog line. <laughs> so I should be getting, I know my row one, has it shipped? Maybe it hasn't. I don't know, it's March 1st, so I should be getting it pretty soon, my March minis, and then I can get to work on that. Okay, so dishcloths. I did get, I finished off the gray yarn that was Knit Picks Dishy, the Christmas yarn that I'm not sure where it came from. I think it was Premier Yarn. I could be wrong on that though because I no longer have the tag. So I finished up all of those and I was gonna switch to socks on the treadmill because I knit my dishcloths while I'm on the treadmill. I have so many dishcloths right now that are finished. <laughs> I'm gonna be giving out lots of dishcloths to friends and family. But I started to work on socks on the treadmill, but I found that my gauge was really changing while I'm on the treadmill. I'm on it for so long and I walk so fast and you know you do just like your hands get a little clammy and so it was really changing my gauge I'm like I'm really not enjoying this I want to go back to dishcloths so I bought more dishcloth yarn <laughs> I ended up getting I got some that I have not started using yet let me find all the things here okay so I bought five of these this is Queensland. I've never used this cotton yarn before. It is Queensland Collection Coastal Cotton Ocean Mist. And I purchased five. So here are three of them that I have not started using yet. And I will link down below a website where these can be purchased. This one is 3007. Three zero zero nine. And three zero zero two. The other one. I cannot remember the numbers on these and the tags are in by the computer, but here's another one that I've started working from. I'm almost done with this one. It's getting blown out there. There we go. So I have one more dishcloth I can do from this one. That one worked up, looks like this. 
I have two finished. I wasn't positive I would be able to get three, so instead of starting a third one from this and then not having enough, because I don't have any more of the gray to like fill in and make it scrappy, I started another one. I don't, the tag is over there for this one too, but they these are all on that website. Here's the other one. And I've got this dish clock going with that one. So I use a US 8 five millimeter. This is a 24 inch circular chow goo. And I will link, or it's, well, it's already linked on my Ravelry project page, the pattern that I use. I use the no holes version of that pattern it's a free pattern. You just have to go click the link on Ravelry and it'll take you right there. So it looks like I'm going to be able to get three of each of these. I will link the website and I got five and then I went on the website and ordered more <laughs> after I started working with it and realized how much I like it. I've never used it, so I cannot speak to the durability of it, the color fastness of it. Are the colors going to fade? You know, because dishcloths do get a lot of use. So I cannot speak to any of that since I've not used this yarn before, but it feels amazing. And I'm really enjoying knitting it up. I love the colors that they have for it. So we will see over time. These are definitely um, the ones I'm doing now. I'm going to put into immediate use in the kitchen so that I can see how they, they use and how the yarn lasts. So that's my only other work in progress I wanted to talk about. And just a reminder, any projects that you don't see me talk about, you know, every single week, it just means they haven't gotten any use. I'm trying not to always show all the things because that's not always necessary when I haven't worked on things. So things you see on the episode, that's what I've actively touched and worked on enough of an amount that I felt like it was, you know, something that should be shown. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about things that have either came in the mail or things that I've purchased. So I did show the Bags by Awesome Granny bag that arrived in the mail. Oh, and I totally forgot. I totally forgot to get, oh, here's one of them. So my friend Jenny gave me a few of her bags. I The other one is in the room and I put it up and I forgot to get it to show you guys, but here is one of them. So cute. I love her zippered bags. This is Jenny of Mountain State Stitches. Has pockets on the inside and I love that inside fabric. So I made a few more yarn purchases over the weekend. I bought some minis, lots and lots of minis. These are by Emma's Yarn. And I have one, two, three, four, six of them, all by Emma's Yarn. I purchased these from Needlefish Yarns. It is an online shop. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these. Will I do socks? Will I do just put them in a blanket? I don't know. I just love them. I thought they were so pretty together. I also purchased the Lovebirds colorway by Fiber Seed. This is on their Sprout Sock Fingering Weight. So pretty. So I can't wait to knit that up. It will probably be socks, although their Sprout Sock does make an amazing, amazing muscle bra hat because I have the teal one that I did not that long ago. I also, I said I purchased lots of minis and I was not lying or exaggerating. <laughs> so many minis. So I have three mini sets from McMullen Fiber Co. that I purchased. 
This is the Crocus mini set. These are all um, on her squishies, Squishy Minis base, an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. So here is this one. There will be a bit of a glare because of my light, but I am not gonna take all of these out. So pretty. This is Defense Against the Dark Arts. So beautiful. And the Versailles collection. I could be saying that incorrectly, but. So this is all of my mini sets and I plan on crocheting with them. You'll see that sometime soon. I also received a gift in the mail from such a sweet viewer. She had purchased this fabric to make herself a bag and made me one as well. So if you're new here, I have a Jeep Wrangler and so does my husband and we love to go on drives in the summer, go to Jeep events. So, and I always knit, um, even with the top back doors off. If Eric's driving, I'm knitting. <laughs> so I love having little special project bags to use for my Jeep knitting. This one is so cute. They even put a little duck on there, which is a Jeep thing. Inside. So it makes me very, very excited for the warmer weather so that I can put this bag into use. Okay, I think that is it. We do have the winner from last episode. And I forgot to pull it when I was at the computer earlier. So I will put the winner up here on the screen. And if you would just contact me at crazy sock lady podcast at gmail.com and give me your shipping information, I can get your yarn and goodie bundle sent out to you ASAP. And then for this week, we'll do the same thing. Just another yarn and goodie bundle from the prize cabinet. And all you have to do is comment down below. Any comment will get you entered to win. And then we will draw the winner for that on episode 178. So that kind of wraps it up for the knitting. So reading and watching, I finished The Woman in Cabin 10 and absolutely loved it. And now I am reading another Ruth Ware book called The It Girl. And so far it's really good as well. I am not far into it at all because I've been so tired after a weekend away with friends that I just have been going to bed and just immediately falling asleep. So I have not read much on it. I'm trying to bring my Kindle down and read more throughout the day. I've been making a lot of changes as far as trying to unplug more from my phone, basically, and not even just so much the phone, but a lot of unplugging with social media and setting boundaries as far as I took all of my work emails off my phone, so I'm only checking them when I sit down at the computer once a day. Um, and that's just a couple of times throughout the week. So I'm really trying to make a lot of changes to take a lot of stress off, off of my plate and really unplug in a lot of ways. I turned off all notifications for social media on my phone and it has been so nice, even in just the couple of days that I have had those boundaries set into place. It was something that was really, really needed. It's been wearing on me a lot. I am such a people pleaser and the pressure of the more, 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 and always seeming to have, you know, when you have all that stuff coming at you constantly, it's just like you feel like there's always someone needing something from you. And so to really unplug and have those boundaries to where it's like, okay, I sit down, I answer these emails and I, I do the comments at this time and it's only done on my computer. It is no longer on my phone. It really is feeling like a weight off because I'm someone who just wants to please everybody and that's not possible. <laughs> that is impossible to do. Um, 
and just like the constant input always coming in of what I should or shouldn't share or you know I'm doing this wrong or that wrong it can be a lot to constantly have it coming in on your phone like that so really working on setting boundaries and it's really helping me feel better and happier and yeah just taking lots of steps to continue to find the joy in all of this again and make it be in a way that works for me and helps me keep enjoying and loving to share because I always love to share what I'm working on on here and so I'm just making changes to make that to where it's all still really enjoyable and works for me but I think that wraps it up um life stuff I've kind of talked here and there about you know I was away for the weekend with friends and last week was just a lot of getting ready for that everybody's doing good around here that's kind of it. But I hope that you all are doing well. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode. I hope that you enjoyed seeing what I was working on and I will check in with you guys again soon. Until then, happy making. Bye.